Wow. So, you've officially been roche Are you okay? Um, we left you here, you were all just young people, now you're all four grown. Definitely, something's changed. Something's changed. Um, Sebastian changed, close, right on stage. <laughs> on stage, he's he's like, so like, look like a sophisticated kid. We come back and he's wearing a sweater like a nun's habit and he's got a v-neck. And I'm like, okay, that's the Sebastian I know, but how did the transformation, no, never mind, I just, whatever. The, the odds are, what was it you say? I'm just, I'm, no, I'm, are you comfortable putting that to your mouth? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, Rob, trust me. I'm going, I'm going backstage and sanitizing this entire thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of sanitizing an entire unit, our next guest. Good segue. Ladies and gentlemen, another dashing and handsome chap is about to hit the stage, and he's got the best damn diction in show business from White Horse Yukon, Tabo Pinnacat. when you sing that song, I know. and he's going to knock me out. No, you got to clear the stage. I go that way. When he Every does. time you're like, is, is this the time? <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what keeps it exciting. I never know which time you're going to knock me unconscious. <laughs> Did he have his coffee this morning? He looked a little cranky. Hi, guys. Hi, Tom. Good to see you. And you. Tomo's here. It's nice to have you here on a Saturday. Where you've been the Sunday this last summer. Yeah, I've been the Sunday guy for a while, and they switch it up. Sometimes I'm the, I'm the Saturday. I like the Saturdays. So I think it's party with you guys at night. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing is, I gotta tell you, band, back me up. You got a great Friday slash Saturday crowd here. I mean, this is a great. I can tell by the energy already. This yeah. is fantastic. I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it, because if I didn't like them, trust me, you'd know. <laughs> These are good people. Go easy on him. Tom Obinicat. <laughs> so this is my first time here. I'm really excited about it. I, 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 uh, I actually, and I know better, but I actually checked the snow conditions because it, Whistler the last couple of years has been shit, excuse my language. It really has, we haven't had much snow. And I, I was just hoping, I was like, maybe there's a little bit of a pace and I can bring my board and I can do some turns. I've always wanted to ride here. And unfortunately, it's just not time yet. But that gives me more reason to come back and I'm very excited. What a fantastic crowd. I always ask, because I never have a sense before I come, I ask uh, Jen, who's one of uh, the people who helps us out with this show, I was like, uh, is it a big, big audience, big show? She's like, no, no, it's, it's pretty small. I, I don't know why, but I envision like something much smaller and, and less enthusiastic than this. This is, wow. Great energy, guys, I like it. Some good coffee here and other stuff. Maybe people start their mornings doing other things. And Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm really nervous. Oh, you know what? Just breathe, brother. I'm nervous too. Um, actually, I was going to ask you, um, since my girlfriend loves you a little bit more than me, that's not true. Can you help me propose to her? Absolute pleasure and an honor. Thank you. An absolute honor. Where, where is your, what's your beautiful? Uh, Natalie. Natalie? I can't see her. <laughs> okay, well let's just call her out. Like, what, do, should we bring her closer? Do you want to do it from here? What do you think's appropriate? <laughs> Natalie, you gotta come up. <laughs> Natalie, I know you're probably terrified right now since he just told you what he was gonna do. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Look at this. Look at this beautiful lady. Wow. This is incredible. One more huge cheer. This is amazing. I'm just gonna hand the mic over a little bit, or I'll just hold the mic. You do, you do, you do the talking. And Natalie Jean Bannister. We met each other in Las Vegas this year, and we fell in love ever since. Will you marry me? Betrayed heaven and stuff. Like, why do you think it was him? I think it would be safe to say that they were very aware of each other, hmm. and he knew of his. Um, he knew of uh, Ezekiel's upstanding reputation, and uh, he knew of his his somewhat tarnished reputation. <laughs> and um, it was a it was a stronger choice. He felt that he would be trusted more quickly if he went he went that route. That's my take on it. I wish I wrote it, but that's what I think. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Jumbo. Hi. I love your meditations. Um, I was wondering how long you've been doing it and if you got into it to help you with your acting or if it's just personal reasons. I'm so happy that you asked because um, I, I've been thinking about it a lot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna segue here in a roundabout way, but I will answer your question. Um, you guys are the most loyal and dedicated and powerful um, fan base out there. You have to know that. And, and this, I've been thinking about this for a while, and I've been sharing you know, my, 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 my passion um, for meditation. And I've been thinking about the social media universe that we live in and how we can communicate to people all over the planet. And your fans, the fans of the show are all over the planet. You guys have the ability to create change, to make the world a better place. You really do, 100%, and in a very, very, very powerful way, as do I. And I want to, I want to encourage that, and I want to share with you, which I've been doing now for more than a few shows, about how important meditation is to me. I'm involved with a, um, an amazing woman, uh, Joanne, who, 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 who created a, um, a site that you can access called Zen for Minds. I'm gonna hand out cards later, um, and you guys can join up in the site for literally the cost of three coffees for a year. 10 bucks, 10 bucks. You can access a library of meditations, quick ones, long ones, ones you can do at the beginning of the day, things specifically for setting your intention, making you happier, more positive, dealing with stress, loss, what have you, um, for $10. I'm gonna hand out those cards. If you don't want to join the site, that's okay. If you're a dedicated meditator already, if you already have access to it, if you already do it, that's great. What I wanted to do today, and I've been thinking about this, and I discussed it with Joanne, because I had a session with her the other day, which was fantastic, because that's what happens when you do this. Let's do a 30-day challenge. Let's 
Rescue 30 Day Challenge. You guys, as I said, are the most dedicated. And I know a lot of you haven't done it before. Maybe you're scared of it. Maybe you've heard things. You, maybe for some of you, you're like, oh, I'm not into that, you know, spiritual mumbo jumbo. I'm not, not very, you know, I don't believe in this or what have you. Listen, it doesn't matter who you are, from what walk of life, culture, upbringing, it doesn't matter who you are. It will benefit you. It's mindfulness. It's about if you're looking to improve yourself with uh, self-control, um, um, eating, relationships, work, creativity, stress, anxiety, weight loss, anything. Doing a practice like this, starting your day with it, with as little as five minutes will benefit you. I promise you. Five minutes. I miss days though. Yeah, I promise you that. There's no, nobody, nobody meditates and is like, oh, okay, you know what, that just ruined my day. <laughs> I wish I had meditated. I went, you know, I went out, I was more, uh, I was more present, I was more compassionate, I was kinder. I, I didn't want to be that person. It was terrible. I'll never do that again. <laughs> it doesn't happen. It's going to benefit you. And sometimes we're in a rush. We lead, we lead busy lives. But there's no way that you can tell me that you can't find five minutes. And I would encourage you to do five minutes in the beginning and five minutes at the end. Because it's really good. The last thing you do, not to be on Facebook, not to be on Twitter or what have you, but take five minutes, set an intention, something you want to improve in your life. Maybe it's your relationship. Maybe it's a goal you have. Maybe it's, uh, like I said, weight loss, uh, a challenge you have, work, getting in better health, uh, learning a new language, whatever it is, set an intention with as little as five minutes a day. So let's start a 30-day challenge. I'm going to check in every day and let you know that I did mine because I get lazy sometimes and I miss my meditation. I'll give you an example. I had a huge amount of stress yesterday. I was dealing with a, a, a very uh, difficult situation and I kept on saying I knew that I had to meditate but I just, I was so wrapped up in it I couldn't do it. And I tried to do one before I went to sleep but I still woke up um, really out of sorts. I was wrapped up in this and I was going around in circles as our minds do. We just, you, 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 what meditation does is it shuts down the chatter. You know how you go around in circles and keep you, a, a negative thought is supported by another negative thought. <clears throat> I was doing that. I had the time right before I came here and did a 15 minute meditation and I'm, I'm fantastic. <laughs> I feel great. I want to share that with you. The world would be a better place. You guys have the power to do that. There's millions of you fans. This world, you teach this to your children. I imagine our kids, and hopefully the, you know, the next the generations to come are gonna laugh at us and be like, you didn't know the meditation was incredible and that we should practice it every day? Well, no wonder there was so much war and, and famine and, and environmental damage and, and, and uh, just you know, lack of compassion and intolerance in the world. We're gonna do this and we're gonna make change and it's gonna be positive change and I'm really excited about it. Sorry for the 10 minute rant, but my mother taught me meditation first when I was 15. I've gone through many phases in my life where I haven't practiced it, and I can tell you without a doubt, um, whenever I get back to it, I, I realize how much difference it makes. It makes everything more manageable. Yeah, I just want to share, I'm passionate about it. Let's, let's make a difference. Let's do it. Thank you so much. Hi. I'm Casey. Hi, um, Casey. You've been in a lot of cult TV shows. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, what do you think makes a cult TV show appeal to so many people? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. You're using the word cult. I mean, Joss Whedon. <laughs> incredible man that he is who's made billions of dollars for every network that he's ever worked on. Anything he touches is gold. He, he has such a loyal fan base. And rightly so, the man is a genius. He's so good at what he does. I don't know what it is, man. I, I, I like to think, and I'll use a different term, I like to think the genre stuff in general, um, the people, the fan base that enjoy it have imagination. You have imagination. That's really what it is. You're creative. Uh, individuals who have beautiful imagination, you allow for other possibilities. You're not so stuck and um, uh, and focused on the way that you know the traditional patterns of television are really boring and tired. And that's why network television, for the most part, a lot of it isn't doing so well. That's why cable television is pushing the boundaries, pushing the barriers, and, uh, and and writing new and fantastic things, and 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 people can't get enough of it. 
you know, this 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 genre that you know, the genre stuff that's out there, it's um it attracts a specific type of people. And again, going back to you guys as a fan base, you, you have that imagination. You're incredibly loyal. You um, you find a community within the other fans, and uh, you guys support each other, man. And it's it's really a beautiful. Thing. to be a part of it. So, maybe I answered your question, maybe yeah, not. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, can we have one more cheer for that beautiful couple who just got engaged? <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Hi. Hi, um, I was wondering if you could meet any of your characters, who would you meet, <laughs> want to meet? <laughs> That's a good question. Mm. <clears throat> I think I'd like to meet all of them, but I think, um, I mean, it'd be pretty fascinating meeting an angel. Yeah. And, and it would. I'd have a lot of questions. <laughs> so what's God really like? Does he really look like Rob? <laughs> He's as nice as Rob and talented. Can he sing like Rob? <laughs> um, I'd love to meet Hilo. I'd like to have a heart to heart with that guy for sure. And I'd like to I'd like to spar with um, Paul Ballard. I'd like to meet him at the gym. I need about a month and a half to get back in shape, but I'd still like to spar, I'd like to spar with Paul Ballard. I think. Wouldn't that be cool to be able to fight yourself? <laughs> Sometimes I play in my head, I'm like, <clears throat> I think about the younger me. And, uh, you know, I was pretty strong and, and <clears throat> I had a lot of things going for me. I, I think, like, if I fought a 28 year old me, he'd probably whoop my ass, but I'm pretty sure I'd kick his ass. Because the knowledge that I've gained since then, I've got that old veteran thing going on. <laughs> I'm an old ringer now. Yeah, there's experience and there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of new tricks. I think I might bait him in and take him out. 28 year old me, coming for you, coming for you, Tomo. Thank you. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm awesome. Awesome. Um, it's part of the reason I started watching Starcross was because you're on it. Like, do you get really sad when you have to die on a show? <laughs> well, it's been a pattern now for a while. So I've embraced that death thing. Like, Tomo, we're offering you a gig. I'm like, fantastic. Do I die? They're like, yes. And I'm like, okay. Let's get her done. Is it a good death? Is it exciting? Interesting. Oh, I'm getting thrown off a roof again. Well, I've already done that. Let's do it again. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Um, yeah, you, you know, it's part of the job, especially when you're doing one-offs or small arcs. You know, it's, it's, it's inevitable. It's going to come. The, you know, funny enough, the first seven years of my career were, were on three different series, and, and uh, I only died in one of them. So I had like seven years where I was spoiled, where I, I was a guy who never died. Seven years straight, I was just used to episodic and just, you know, living on. And then when that finished, I was doing all these other things, and I was dying all over the place. And at first, I was having some issues with it. I was like, really? Do I have to die that way? Joss Whedon, really? <laughs> But yeah, it's part of the job. You know, life is really short. I want to, um, I'd like to challenge myself and experience as many different characters as I can as an actor. That said, I, I'm also looking forward to the time where I get to, it's been a while, I'm looking forward to the time where I get to really immerse myself into a character and take a, a longer journey. Whether that be a year or two years or three years, I'm looking forward to that again. And I feel like it's coming up. Manifesting it. <laughs> Thank you. What was that? Nothing. <laughs> Sammy Daddy! What was that? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, before we run out of time, we, do have, we have a clip re ready to show for the people that haven't seen it from Rift World, if you'd like to. <laughs> this beautiful man has been so supportive. Little side project that I have for those of you who haven't seen it. For those who may smoke in the room, you might enjoy this even more. <laughs> Check it out. Go Check ahead. out this clip. We'll roll it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you learned it in the ways of magic. What is this, a movie or a play or... Do I appear to play? 
Yeah. You <laughs> really think that you're a wizard? What did I can prove for this? A teleporting wizard with a fire drink tattoo? That's him. He's legit, right? Oh, he's nuts. I mean, it's very sad. <laughs> What is it, Halloween? Is Halloween. it? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Can I just say that you're in really good shape for a wizard? It's a sign. It's a sign of stupidity. Keep my words, my lady. Neither you nor your brother are safe. You must not return home. Please do, do not invoke your gods. I meant no offense. <laughs> You can watch it right away. You can go online. You can go to CBC Punchline. You can uh, you can find the links. They're all over the place. I'm sure many people will tweet it. I'll tweet it right after this. It's very easy. You can watch it in under an hour. It's a web series. The episodes are five to seven minutes. I'd love it if you watched it. If you liked it, retweet it. If you don't like it, retweet it anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's good. You can watch it in under an hour, so you guys can be bored at a lunch break and throw on some earbuds and watch it on your phone. It's fun. We had a lot of fun. We're getting a lot of love. We just won a, um, we just won, um, Best Dramedy, or, uh, I think it was New Pilot, uh, at the New York Film Festival. Some sort of prestigious award. We've been, getting, uh, we've been getting a lot of acclaim, a lot of awards, and things are happening. So you're going to watch it, and I'm pretty sure you're going to want more. And uh, we're working on that right now. Things are looking good. Yeah. Where was that? Is that here? <clears throat> Whose turn is it? Here. Yeah. Hi. 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 Um, I'm Tristan. Um, you were on Dollhouse, right? Woo <laughs> <laughs> was that with Joss Whedon? <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 I was on that. <laughs> yeah. um, I was wondering what it was like to be on Dollhouse. If you even remember it, I guess. If, what was the last bit? If you even remember it, I guess. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was smoking a lot back then. So I was just one big haze. I don't really remember that period of my life. I'm totally joking. Um, it, 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 was, it, was, it was a great experience. Uh, I guess worked with some incredible people. Everyone on the crew was very, very passionate. Joss Whedon's writing team was incredible. Tim Mania, he brought in a huge group of, you know, the best of the best. The actors were fantastic from top to bottom. Um, but there were some struggles. We had some problems right out of the gate, which is very difficult for an actor to, to insulate himself from. <clears throat> the show was struggling right from the jump. The, Joss Whedon did an amazing pilot. And then they um, they decided to redo the pilot, and that's never a good sign. <laughs> you don't want to be reshooting the pilot, and we were reshooting it, so we cannibalized that first episode, the original one that Joss did, and we spread it out over four episodes, which was very very confusing chronologically about because everything happened at a different time now. In the first episode, I meet Echo right away. In the new version, I didn't meet her till like the third or fourth episode. So in my head, I'm like, have I met her? You had to track it yourself, and everyone was kind of scrambling and rushing to get it done and be on point. And, and um, it's very important as an actor to know where you're coming from, what what's just transpired, who have you met, what has happened, what piece of evidence for my character has he learned, where is he uh, at this point in the story. So that was it was challenging in the beginning, but I think we found our momentum, and then you know, I. I'd be lying if I didn't say, I think everyone was surprised that we got a second season. There were some really good episodes, but things just weren't looking good. The network wasn't completely happy as far as I know. And to be honest with you, which was very odd, but a lot of the fans didn't tune in like they normally do for Joss Whedon's stuff. And that probably had to do with the fact that this was six years ago, and then uh, getting things online wasn't as access accessible and normal as it is now. And uh, we were in the Friday night death slot. 
It was the worst slot. They, that's where they put shows to just fail, and we got put in it. And originally when the show started, we were, we were supposed to be opening for 24. There was so much hype. I was like, we're opening for 24, the hottest show on television? I was ecstatic. And in a period of three months, we were suddenly in the death slot. I was like, how did that, how did that happen so quickly? I'm not privy to you know, the, the big decisions and the, the, the workings of a major network. I, I, can, I can guess at certain things, but I'm not sure how certain decisions are made. And, Whatever happened in a very brief time, we went from being in a great position to a very bad position. It was challenging, but we did get two seasons and it was a fantastic experience. Woo! Thank you. Hi. Hi. I also have a dollhouse question. The, um, from an acting point of view, what was it like uh, coming in and all the other actors are getting to play multiple characters, multiple things, and every week you're Paul? <laughs> um, Boring. <laughs> I, oh God, Paul again. Paul, Paul, Paul. No, it was, it was, uh, I, it was good. But it, again, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying there, we had high hopes of the show going on. And when things started looking pretty good again in the second season, we had a little momentum, the scenes were good. It was inevitable in the storyline that I was eventually gonna be, that it was gonna happen. And I was, I was just hoping that, that it would happen, that I would get to play a different character. Like that would have been the coolest thing to do. I never got to that point, unfortunately. We got canceled before that. <laughs> but I can say that it, it was really fascinating watching these actors. <laughs> take on that challenge. That is one of the most difficult things to do, especially episode to episode. Like, I remember Ed Bear, who played Victor. He, uh, <clears throat> he's a fantastic actor, really, really talented. Joss handpicked him, he saw him in a play and was just like, this kid is brilliant. I'm gonna give him this show, this character. Uh, Ed Bear was constantly having to learn a new accent days before, which is an impossible task to do it properly. It really is, even if you, Maybe if you have a fantastic ear, and there's very few people out there, and very few performers who do, or you've practiced something many times before, and it's, it's in your repertoire, then you can do it. And Vera didn't, like, he, he was doing like a, you know, a, he had to do a British accent, which he really hadn't worked on, in, you know, and he had days to work on it. That's really an impossible task. You're kind of setting up an actor to fail, but you know, he, he, would, he, went, he went full in and did an amazing job. I thought he, I thought he did back fantastic. And Deechin, who played the other main doll, she was, she was just great. She's a beautiful, beautiful soul and a very talented actor. And I, I'm not sure if she's working a ton right now, but if she isn't, people should be hiring her because she's, she's stunning, amazing creature. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> Hello, my name's Ryan. Hey, Ryan, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. Um, I was wondering, for Ezekiel, when you had to go out of the show carving the angel seal into your chest, um, is that the way you wanted your character to go out, or would you do something different? Um, I can't say that that's necessarily how I wanted him to go out, but when I read it, I was like, you know, there's some honor in it. I mean, where his intentions, where, where he was coming from, where Gadriel was coming from. The reason he did it, he was trying to, he was trying to make amends for all the wrong that he had done, and he was very conscious of the wrong he'd been doing for a while, and he saw an opportunity to, to, to get uh, Castiel out of prison and, and possibly make things better, and it involved sacrificing himself. Um, let's hope we see him again. We might you never know it's supernatural. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that the show is ever going to end. <laughs> could be here like 10 years from now. <laughs> you never know. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Tomo. How are you? Hi. I'm well. How are you? Good. Uh, you look nice today. <laughs> Thank you very much. You look nice too. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, since all my Friday people saw that clip yesterday from Rip Road Chronicles, I was wondering um, if you could tell us any more about it, and also if, since you just mentioned it, if that's the character that you're hoping you can get more in depth with. Oh, um, well, what else to tell about it? It's, 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 I mean, you get a really good sense of what the show's about and the tone of it. 
It's uh, it's dramatic, romantic comedy. It's it's fun though. We, if if I have it my way, which I will, <laughs> if we do more episodes, we're gonna, we're gonna see some badass action scenes too. Like Alar, there's something about him because he's so out of place with the technology in this world that we're in. Because he comes from a completely different place. That is, you know, he, he kind of comes across as a, a, a lovable buffoon at times. <laughs> But he's really not where he comes from, and I think um, we'll see that different aspect of him. We'll probably see him in his world, and I, I'm really looking forward to like choreographing and doing some amazing battle scenes with weapons and everything. And you saw that badass who was hunting me down. <laughs> They're a race of assassins, and uh, we've got a fantastic actor playing that guy. So there's there's a whole lot of things to look forward to with this series. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm pretty sure you know when I signed on. A, the original was called The Portal, and it was, uh, you know, I read it and I was like, yeah, it's, my agent was like, I really think you should do this. You haven't done anything like this. Um, try it out. And I ended up having a fantastic time. It reminded me that, that there's so much pressure in this business when you're on set and uh, you're working for a network. Um, there's a lot of pressures. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. You, you know, there's a lot of people looking down on you and there's a lot that's unsaid that's ex expected of you. And when you do smaller projects, for the love of it, for the art, and th that pressure isn't really there, and you can just play and be creative, um, it's, it's, it's amazing. It reminds you, as an actor, why, why most of us started this. We have crazy imaginations, and we love to make believe, we love telling stories, and that's what the portal was for me. So when they came back and they said they wanted to do more, I, I, even though I had a, a great experience, the way we ended things in the, in the, in the short film, I was like, mm, I'm not sure that I'm interested. And then I read, I read the, uh, the scripts, the, uh, the web series that we were just promoting there. And Aaron Carplot told me that she was laughing out loud on the plane when she read it. And I ended up doing the exact same thing and I was sold. I was like, this is gonna be fun. We had a fantastic shoot. We did um, all eight episodes in three weeks. We shot it in Toronto in the middle of winter. Freezing my ass off, walking around with no shirt on. <laughs> Imagine that stopping traffic. A lot of people are like, Ooh, what's up with that crazy guy? <laughs> Somebody give that guy a sweater. And it's cold. <laughs> Check out those pants. <laughs> um, yeah, so overall, it was, it was a great experience, and I'm looking forward to doing more. Um, you said there was something else about... Yeah, I was wondering if this was going to be the character that you wanted to get more in-depth with. Yeah, I do. I definitely do. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, so, Paul Ballard was actually the first role that I ever saw you in. And then I, um, someone else asked my question, so I need to come up with a new one on the fly. I know Mark Shepard guest starred on Dollhouse occasionally, so when you came to the set of Supernatural, what was it like kind of being like, hey, it's you again? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Mark and I know each other from Battlestar. <laughs> Mark is obviously a very, very, very talent, talented and experienced veteran in this business. He's been doing this forever. He comes from a you know performer family. He's 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 a natural and he's he's very, very, very talented and, and capable of doing so much. He's actually got a really wide range, if you ask me. And um, he did fantastic work on Battlestar Galactica. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. <laughs> so see we all. And. Um, it's so it was just great to see Shepard again. You know, when I saw, when I, actually, uh, Joss Whedon told me that Shepard was going to be coming on, I was like, okay, fantastic, that's beautiful. I love, I love Shepard's work. I can't wait to work with him. And uh, we had a couple cool little scenes, and and uh, you know, to see how well he's doing on this, and he's, you know, he's knocking it out of the park with this character, and it's just good to see. It's good to see. I'm happy, and I know the fans love him. He's incredibly popular, and <laughs> rightly so. Thank you. Hi. Hi. George from Texas says hi. Who? George from Texas. He really George? likes you. Tell him I say what's up. <laughs> and my question is, um, if Gadriel had a dating profile, what would it say? What was the last bit? If he had a dating profile? What would it say? <laughs> That's fantastic. I don't know. That's great. <laughs> if Gadriel had a dating profile. <laughs> Likes to take long walks in the clouds. <laughs> Made some mistakes in the past. 
learning from those mistakes every day and trying to get better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Hi. Okay. My dad loves you on Battlestar Galactica. You're his favorite character. Nice. And I love you on Supernatural. So, <laughs> out of the two characters, which one was harder to get into, I guess? Um, well, I'd never played an angel before, so the, there was a challenge to that, especially when I found out that, you know, um, Jared had already played Gadriel before me. I didn't know that. I found that out on the day before. I'm sure you've all heard this. I've told the story pretty much every con, but I'll tell it again for those of you who haven't heard. Right before I was about to shoot it, the pivotal, one of the first scenes that I did, a, a major scene, I made all these choices specifically about how I was going to play Ezekiel or Gadriel. And um, the director asked me if I, if I wanted to see what Jared had done as, as Gadriel. And I said, come again? And he's like, well, do you, do, you, do you want to see, we have to shoot in five minutes. Or, do you want to see what Jared's done as Gadriel? And I mean, what, what do you mean do I want to see what Jared's done as Gadriel? Jared's already played Gadriel? I thought I was going to play Gadriel first. And he was going to, what? Yes! Five minutes? Why? What are you doing to me? I think it's a good idea, don't you? God, I don't know. Some actors aren't into that. And I'm like, <laughs> so luckily, you know, Jared had a very specific thing he was doing. The, the way he was speaking and, and his physicality was very specific. And he was, and he was. I could take a little bit of that in five minutes and incorporate it into what I was doing. And luckily, it wasn't too far from each other. So, yeah. <laughs> guys have been fantastic. I can say without a doubt this is some of the best energy I've felt in the room for a while. Give yourself a huge hand. There he is. Come up in again, everybody. I don't call it coming. That's not, that's violence, Mom. Quit preaching violence. Speaking of pre preaching violence. Wait, hey, wait, Richard? Yeah. You move so quickly. Why don't you check with the audience and see how they're doing? How you doing? <laughs> to me, it goes without saying, they just had a Sebastian Tom Opinacat one two punch. Sandwich. Of course, they're doing well. Ladies let's, and gentlemen, now let's serve them a uh, Gilman Osric salad. Let's bring up our next people because you're Saturday people and you, do, you deserve greatness and beauty and purification. Ladies and gentlemen, Andre Chow and Gil McKinney. people were at karaoke last night. It's a real simple test. So, I'm going to say something, and if you're karaoke, then you know the right answer. Are we ready? Sweet Caroline. Which I never will so good. That's right. Well done.